Hello and welcome! I'm DDF Racer, and today I'm going to be trying out yet another one of the new Tatas cars for R Factor 2, Kiwi style. Okay, so this is the FT50, which is used in the Toyota Racing Series in New Zealand. So, to give this car a proper test, I thought I'd take it to one of the tracks used in the real life series, Highlands Motorsport Park. Now I need to admit that before jumping in to do some practice laps around here, I'd, I'd never heard of this circuit before, which is, which is a shame because it's absolutely amazing. It's got some seriously high speed sections with a couple of chicanes which are absolutely on the limit, um, a couple of long straights as well with heavy braking at the end which should make for some nice overtaking. Uh, the track even crosses over itself at one point as well in a figure of eight. The car itself feels quite nice to drive as well. Uh, it's quite similar to the US F17 which I tried it in one of my previous videos which you can find a link to probably here somewhere on the screen. That's a good sign, that car, I, I absolutely love that car. It's not exactly the most powerful out there, only 205 horsepower, but with skinny tyres, still quite exciting to drive. Anyway, 15 minutes against the AI. Sweet as bro! Let's go racing! Alright, here we go. 15 minutes, starting in position 8 against the AI here at Highlands Motorsport Park. Build the revs and... Green, green, green. Green lights. And a very anticlimactic start there. Engine Get note just there. dies completely. It's very easy to bug this car down off the line as we're getting boxed in, heading towards the, the high speed chicane at the start. Guy ahead of us just completely cuts the apex and takes out the tyre barrier there. As we head into this almost flat out right hander. Almost flat out. You have to feather the throttle and the steering so much. It's going to kill the left hand tyres throughout the race. Starts okay. Now find your groove. Will do, mate. We made it through in one piece, and I'm sure. Oh, oh, we've run completely oh, yeah. wide there. We're on the left. Kick the throttle to get the car going again. You can see him in the mirrors, maybe going for a dive. I'm going to block off the apex, but that puts me wide as well. Clear left. Clear left. Anyway, we hold on to the position as we head onto the back straight. This isn't really a back straight, it's just a collection of high speed kinks, which take us towards the first proper heavy braking point of the track. Careful not to lock the tyres. Lead off the brakes. And progressive on the throttle. Could have been a bit smoother. And heading down towards the terrifying high speed chicane here. Just got to thread the needle. It's not a place to go side by side as the cars ahead of us were thinking about. We're going to be on the outside. We're going to cut back towards the apex. Which puts us on the outside for this corner. Over the crest, early on the brakes. Back towards the apex again. Oh. Car on your left. Left side's clear. Sorry, mate. Car on your left. Brake checked us ahead of us. I was expecting to accelerate. Forget, Forget about it. Anyway, through the final corner, onto the start finish, and that is a lap of Highlands Motorsport Park. What an amazing circuit. Head down to the first chicane. Hopefully, we can do it as intended now. Slight confidence lift. Oh. Oh. Big crash with the AIs there. That's a couple of free piece, and that's why you don't go side by side through the chicane. Very reminiscent of the, uh, I believe it's the boot, not the boot, the carousel. I'm Watkins Glen, basically. The high speed chicane and the first right hander, but without the banking. Very reminiscent of Watkins Glen, those set of corners. But yeah, what an absolutely fantastic track. Got no idea why it took me so long to hear about this place. And, um,. Yeah, if it wasn't for thinking about somewhere realistic to take the Tartus FT50, I would never have done research on New Zealand tracks in the first place. So thank you, uh, Studio397 and Tartus for that, as I completely missed my braking point for the herp in there. Put myself under pressure to the car behind, going down to the chicane. Thread the needle. There's a massive bump on the inside of the first curb, which you do not want to hit. We'll just unsettle the car. <laughs> and proceeds to hit that exact bump. I've heard of the commentator's curse before, but I didn't think it worked on yourself. See if I can get the apex a little bit better this time. No one in front of us to block us on the way out here. That was a bit better. Gotta be so thoughtful on your uh, inputs here. 
has just done a 136 and 62. The gap to Lee ahead is now 2.9 seconds. The gap to Tank Slapper behind is now 0.8. That last lap oh, was a just a little lift. Zero eight. Drop it down to fifth and feather the throttle and the steering here. You don't want to. You don't want to plant it too early, otherwise you just get pushed towards the outside of the track with understeer. You're going into the scenery. Of which there is a lot of here in New Zealand. Very beautiful scenery as well. The right side tyres are cold. Might see a few hobbits in the distance at some point if we're, if we're lucky. That's better. That's better. Anyway, this car is absolutely fantastic, this FT50. Very reminiscent of the US F17, which I tried in a previous video. Which is not a bad thing at all. And it's not easy to drive, despite being such a small car. Give the inside curb a bit of a miss there, that was a lot better. And roll off the brakes here. It's an inviting apex. It begs you to take more speed than you actually can. So many times I've gone wide there. Anyway, tuck it into the apex. And feather the throttle. It's quite easy to lose the rear on acceleration in this thing. It really is. It doesn't have much power, but it's it's slippy. New fastest lap for Yin, 136.56. This is brilliant. Keep it up. The gap to Lee in front is now 3.0. U5. The gap to Tank Slapper behind is now 0.8. That lap was a 136.65. You've really got to think about your movements in this car. The steering is very precise. easy to lose the rear as well and the car doesn't like to brake and turn at the same time so you've really got to brake in a straight line and think about your turning very much a car that helps you to refine your technique and make it become a better driver which I suppose is the whole point of these lower lower formula cars it's all about nurturing the talent and this this is a great car to do this in and I would say it's a great car to race against as well but unfortunately uh, we're in a little bit of a bubble at the moment, but that might be about to change with my absolutely shoddy driving missing the herpin again there. He's, he's in the mirrors. He's in the mirrors, but I'm not going to give him the line through the, uh, through the chicane. As we hit the bump on both apexes. Playing with fire. I don't want to give up the position. Hopefully the car's head can start fighting. Give up some time and we can get back in the fight again. What's my position? B5. We've made up three places since the start at least. But I do want to try and get a few more. Top five's not bad though. Maybe if we if we're a little bit lucky, we can get onto the podium. The gap to Lee ahead is now 2.9 seconds. You've just done a 136.59. Okay down, we're matching race pace. The gap to tank slapper behind is now 0.5. All about being nice and precise in this car. Really makes you think about your inputs. I love it. Your right sides are cold. Studio 397 have really outdone themselves again with this one. I mean, in comparison to the previous ones, Compared to the uh, F3 car from Donington in my previous video, We're okay on fuel. it's um, it's nowhere near as planted. There we go. That was a better herpin. And Mr. Spot is saying I'm good on fuel as well. I uh, I think I may have overfilled it slightly. I didn't really check the fuel before the start of the race. I just using still using the default amount. Pretty small tanks in these cars. They don't use much fuel. There we go, that was much better. Another thing that's better about the PM18 on this car as well is the rev limiter. It looks like Binkle has stacked it. Green flag sector three. It's got great top speed this car for, for what it actually is. 
2.4. That's the fastest lap of the race. That yes. lap time was 1.36.12. The gap to Tank Slapper behind is now 0.9. Oh, this that first chicane never gets old. Really thread the needle. And then this just keeps on going and going and going. And heading into a tricky braking point here. As you're braking, turning left, downshifting, and then immediately turning right again, and then slowing down again. It just... Change of direction, this car. Really testing it. This is a fun one. This is a lot faster than you think. You've really got to take the apex slower. But with the banking, it helps push the car around. And then like a roller coaster coming out the other side. And then onto this series of kinks. Can't really go side by side here without losing too much speed. And this deceptively... Deceptively tricky hairpin. So, so fun. Although one thing I, I do have to point out about this track, sadly, as you probably saw in the... Whoo, whoo, lost the rear. That was lucky. The rear of the car wiggling all over the place there. That was very lucky not to go into the, uh, into the barrier on the crossover. Incident in sector three. Sector three is yellow. Ah, scruffy driving. Ernst has spun off. Yeah, like I was saying, one of the things I do have to point out about this track, unfortunately, it's not really optimized well for VR. There should be a lot of mountains in the background. The scenery seems to disappear for some reason. There must be some kind of graphical bug. I'm not sure if you can see it on the left of the screen just there. But there should be mountains all the way around the side of the track. They work in the desktop version, but as soon as you run in VR, it's like it's it's clipping the scenery for some reason. Quite, quite disappointing. As we're in New Zealand, this should be quite good scenery. Yeah, we're kind of really holding station at the moment, stuck in fifth position. Maybe if I concentrate and do a few clean laps, I might be able to get a little bit closer, but we are running out of time. Session update. I didn't catch that. Session update. Four minutes remaining. P5. The gap ahead is now 2.4. So only four minutes remaining. Only a handful of laps. The car behind us is getting closer. There we go. That's a bit better. <laughs> you have no idea how tight I'm gripping the wheel through that chicane. Just holding on for dear life. Bouncing it off the limiter in third, they're not really worth shifting up to fourth for that split second before we have to get heavy on the brakes again before the crest. Slight confidence lift here. I really do want to take that last corner flat out, but I'm afraid I'd be putting it in the fence on the start finish straight. One second, we're currently setting the pace. Your lap time was 136.21. The gap to Tank Slapper behind is now 0.7. I'm going to be quiet for a lap now, guys. Let you enjoy the sounds of this Toyota engine. And also concentrate and get some fast laps in. See if we can get a chance at the cars ahead. Definitely getting closer. Definitely getting closer. Two minutes to go. Two minutes. Possibly only a couple of laps left. You've just done it. 136.24. It'd be nice to get the car ahead of us. Get P4. It's quite.
quite a gap away though unfortunately. There's a lot of rubber down on the track now which definitely helps with the grip through this corner. The tyres aren't wearing out as fast as, as the grip's going down which is nice. Theoretically with the fuel going down as well every lap should be quicker than the last. But that's theoretically. That takes into account that I'm a good consistent driver. Which, if you've watched this channel, you know I'm not. But hey, it's entertaining, right? Come on guys, please start fighting. You can sniff a podium. Really got to nail this chicane now. So terrifying. Never gets any easier. Oh, oh. I think he fluffed it. We're all over him now. Ooh, easy on the throw, mate. We're as close as we've been. Last lap. Okay, here we go. You've just done a 136.18. Fastest lap for Tank Slapper. 136.11. Ah, too wide. Get onto the dirty stuff on the outside of the track. They definitely seem to struggle through the high speed chicane, so I think our chance is going to come at the end of the lap. Just got to try and stay with them. Oh, take a little bit too much curb on the inside there. I get the feeling like a few more laps would have been good here. Whoa! Almost lose the rear again. Getting a little bit too excited. 20 minutes would have been good. Instead of this 15 minute race. Just a few more laps and maybe, maybe it could have been much, much more in the fight. Okay, good exit. Whoa! Give it some jandal. I'm not going to repeat the rest of that line. But Scott McLaughlin said this is a family friendly channel. Oh, he's gone wide. He's gone wide. Are we going to have a chance? Let's go to the inside. On your right. right side's he's going to pin us. He's going to pin us. Ah, oh, I think that was our chance. Just can't get him on the exit. Oh, that was our chance. Through the final corner. Is that the checkered flag? Yep. P5. And there's the finish. Good result, mate. Well done. Ah, oh, that wasn't too bad. That wasn't too bad. It's not exactly the most exciting race I've ever done on this channel. But <laughs> a very exciting a very exciting car to drive. The uh, Tata's FT50. As used in the real life World Toyota Racing Series. As used on this real life remarkably amazing circuit. Highlands Motorsport Park. I'm probably going to go and check out some real races now and see how far off the pace I was. <laughs> My best lap was, what, a 36-1 or something, maybe? I imagine you can go a lot faster around here with some better driving lines. And probably a better setup as well, but yeah, that was a lot of fun. Great car to drive. you got to respect it. You've really got to use your finesse on the turn-in. Balance the throttle and the, uh, the brakes and the steering, sorry. And really ba balance the throttle on the exit as well. Can't give it too much, you can't just plant it and forget. You haven't got the big wings and the big tyres to help you out here. It's all about... Well, no traction control, of course, either. It's all about that right foot. Anyway, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. And I hope you give this car a go. It is free with R Factor 2. It's completely free. And it's actually part of the default content as well. So there's no excuse not to try it if you have R Factor 2. I'd recommend either this or the USF 17. This is this is a good uh, <laughs> it's a good challenger. It's a good challenger as we go around to complete a second parade lap. I'm just going to cruise it around the top gear now while I talk to you guys. But yeah, it's, it's a good challenger. It's a really good challenger. 
both cars heaps of fun. Not that much of a difference between them. I'd probably have to give the USF-17 another go. Just to get a feel for it, side by side comparison. Right side. Right side oh, this was fun. Anyway, hope oh you enjoyed God. the race guys. Right. Eighth position to fifth position. Not most exciting, but it'll do. Give me a right give side. me a thumbs up, give me a like. Right if you enjoyed clear. the race. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Have you tried this? What do you think of it? Do you enjoy it? Is it a bit too easy? Is it a bit too difficult for you? What do you think of the heads-up display as well? I made a few changes to SimHub, I'd like to get your feedback on that. And if you're just up for general chat, well, I do my best to reply to every single comment that I get on these videos, which, again, thanks to you guys, it's more of them than there ever has been. The support on this channel is just growing and growing, and I really appreciate you watching. So yeah, don't forget to like, leave me a comment, I'm up for a chat. If you want to see more races, press that big old red subscribe button. And if you do that, you might as well press the uh, the bell notification as well, so you get get a bit of an idea when I'm uploading stuff. Get a little notification from YouTube, which is always nice. Anyway, that's enough rambling for now. I can't really do a third cooldown lap, so I'm going to bring it into the pits and say thank you for watching. Box in three hundred and twenty meters. And I'll catch you guys in the next video.